Hungarian folk tales. The poor cobbler and the king of the winds. There was once a poor cobbler who toiled all day and all night and had more children than there are holes in a sieve. One day he mended the shoes of a miller who paid him with flour and he was carrying the flour home when the wind blew all the flour away. Well, that's too much. I'll go and find the King of the Winds to let him know it was heartless to take that sack of flour away from me. He made his way through many lands until he arrived at a beautiful meadow. There he saw a whirlwind approaching that blew the dust from the road up into a spiralling cloud. And the poor cobbler was so very afraid that he took his hat off and lay flat on the ground to save himself from the raging wind. You are wise to recognise and bow down before my power, said the King of the Winds, or else you would have fared much worse. Tell me, what brings you to this distant place? I came for compensation from you, Your Majesty. The other day I was paid a sack of flour and I was just carrying it home when a youthful breeze blew it clean out of my hands and now my family have no food to eat. Leave that to me, that wicked wind will suffer for its deeds, but I will not let you suffer any longer. So the king led the poor cobbler into his palace, where he fed him and gave him a magical lamb. Then he said, when you arrive home, simply say, shake yourself, O lamb, and the lamb will shake off enough money to keep you for a month. But beware not to try this before you arrive home. The poor cobbler took leave from the King of the Winds and left for home. But his curiosity overcame him and he simply had to see what the little lamb could do. As soon as he uttered the word of command, the ground around the lamb was showered with gold coins. He soon reached his lodgings for the night in the house of a very old friend and he warned his friend never to say, shake yourself, O lamb. But the poor cobbler had hardly fallen asleep when his host and his wife ordered the beast, shake yourself, O lamb. When they saw the gold coins scatter on the ground, they took the animal and replaced it with a lamb from their own flock. The poor cobbler woke the next morning, but failed to notice the change. He thanked the man and his wife and left for home with high hopes in his heart. When he eventually arrived back, he said, Shake yourself, O lamb. He repeated the order a number of times, but the little lamb simply stood and stared back at him. The cobbler then set off again to visit the king of the winds, and he was very angry. He marched straight to the palace to voice his complaint. I am sure you did not take my advice, and you must have spoken to the lamb before you reached home. But this time, I will give you a tablecloth, and all you have to say is, fill yourself with fine fare, O tablecloth, and it will be covered in food. But do not be tempted to try this before you arrive home. But the poor cobbler was too curious again, and he tried the tablecloth. When evening came, he took lodging with his friend again, and he said to him, you mustn't tell my tablecloth to fill itself with fine fare. The friend and his wife could hardly wait for the cobbler to sleep that night. They gave the order at once and when they found out what a valuable tablecloth he had, they exchanged it for one of their own. The next day he arrived home and became terribly angry when he ordered the tablecloth again and again, but nothing happened. Again, the poor cobbler travelled hastily back to see the King of the Winds, who was waiting for him when he arrived and presented him with a small cane. He told him he should not tell the cane to turn around cleverly, O cane, before he arrived home again. The poor cobbler could barely wait to find out what the cane would do, and so he quickly said, Turn around cleverly, O cane. 
cobbler cane hopped up and began to beat him hard. The poor cobbler cried out in pain, stop, and the clever cane stopped beating him at once. Now the poor cobbler knew what to do with the cane. On his way home, he stayed with his old friend again. He warned the man and his wife not to say, turn around cleverly, O cane. But his wife's friend woke her husband at midnight. They took the cane into their room and she said, turn around cleverly, O cane, once for me and once for my husband. The poor cobbler was quickly woken by their cries. I told you not to address my cane, but it seems that you are the guilty one, so let it beat you as it will. Oh, we promise to return both the lamb and the tablecloth. Then the poor cobbler ordered the cane to stop. But the friend and his wife did not wait for the cane to beat them again, and they hurried forth with the poor cobbler's lamb and his tablecloth, who took them home to his family, who never wanted for money or food again. And they all lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, long ago and far away, there lived a king who had a beautiful daughter. The king had a wonderful garden full of flowers and with a giant tree in the middle. One day, the princess was strolling in the garden when a wind blew so strongly that it nearly blew the giant tree to the ground. But instead, it whisked the princess up and sat her right on top of the tree. The king let it be known that he would give his daughter and half of his kingdom to the brave man who brought his daughter back. Young men, brave and tall, came one after the other, but none of them could climb the tree. One broke his arm, one his leg, and the other his neck. The king had a young swineherd called John, the swineherd was in the forest one day with his pigs, when one of them came up to him and said, John, you should rescue the princess. What foolish talk, little pig. It's not foolish at all. Just go to the king and tell him. So young John went to see the king that same evening. What's the matter, my boy? Your majesty. I will climb the giant tree and rescue your daughter, if you will allow. I will allow you, John, but if you fall, fall to your death, or else I will have you executed for insolence. Your Royal Highness, please have a mighty buffalo killed and have seven pairs of boots and seven coats made from its thick hide, and I shall return when they are all worn through. John climbed up the tree with an axe and he climbed as quickly as a cat. He climbed and climbed until he reached the longest branch and then he crawled as he could no longer walk. When he reached the end of the branch, he jumped on one of the giant leaves and it launched him up through the clouds like a sprightly frog. The world above was much the same as the one below. He was exploring this new place when he heard the princess asking him, What are you doing here, John? I'm looking for you, princess. 
Oh, John, you should know that my husband is a dragon with three fierce heads. When he finds out that you have come to take me home, he will kill you at once. Then she took young John into the palace. John, I shall hide you here so that he will not find you when he comes home. Then I shall present you to him properly. The dragon soon returned home and he opened the door with his mighty battle axe and it flew open. I smell a stranger here. Who was in my home? Don't be angry, husband dear. My swineherd climbed up from the earth below to serve me here. Well, we shall see whether we can use you or not. Take a seat and eat with me. John ate and drank and so did the dragon. After their meal, the dragon took John to the stables, where he showed him the horses and explained his chores. A young horse lay in the corner in a miserable state. It was thin and very weak, while all the other horses were incredibly fat. The dragon said to John, your job, John, is to feed my horses and keep the stables clean. But never feed the young horse anything it wants to eat. If it wants oats, give it hay. And if it wants hay, give it water. So the boy did as the dragon told him. One day the dragon went out to hunt when John was feeding the horses. He stopped for a moment and asked the thin horse, you poor thing, why are you so thin? You can't even walk. John, you have a good heart. If you listen to me, you will have good fortune. I know why you came. Tomorrow is Sunday. Go to the princess and tell her to find out from the dragon where he holds his strength and then let me know. And that's what he did. The next day, the princess said to the dragon, darling dragon, don't go hunting today. I feel so lonely without you. And she began to caress the dragon. The dragon was happy as he thought the woman loved him, but she loved him as much as she loved horse manure. Dear husband, do not deny an answer to a question of mine. What do you want to ask, dear wife? I only want to know where you keep your strength. Oh, dear wife, no one else should know about that except me. If you don't tell me, you don't really love me. But I do love you, dear. If you loved me, you would tell me. Look, my darling, this is a great secret. No one must know about it. People always say that once a woman and a man are married, they should have no secrets any longer. Very well, I will tell you. But you must not tell another soul. There is a silver bear living in the forest. It goes to the stream every day at noon to take a drink. If someone cut its head in two, a rabbit would jump out. If someone shot the rabbit and cut its head in two, then a box would jump out of that. There are nine wasps in the box. If someone destroyed that box and killed the wasps, then I would become weaker than a fly. The wife kissed him and brought him a jug of strong red wine. Let's drink to your health. They filled their glasses and the dragon drank his glass of wine in one mighty gulp. The princess pretended to drink her wine, but did not, and poured the wine on the floor. Well, said the dragon, let's now drink a glass of wine to your health. The dragon drank the wine, and the princess did not, but she poured it down her dress. Then the princess said, now let's drink to John's good health. When they drank the next glass of wine, the princess could see that the dragon was getting drunk. Dear husband, let's drink another glass of wine to the long life we shall live together. So they did. Then the dragon fell down like a log. The princess called John in. John, now I know where he keeps his strength. After she told him the story, he went out to the stable and told the story to the horse. Go and build a fire from wood, and after the fire has died down, bring me the hot embers. And that's what John did. The horse ate the hot ashes and said to John, and now let me out of the stable. And that's what John did. The horse ate the hot embers 
and then it transformed into a stallion with a golden mane and five legs. John, run down into the cellar. There you will find a golden saddle and a suit made of golden thread. Put the suit on and then take the saddle and put it on my back. You will also find a sword hanging on a nail. You must take that too. John did as he was told. When they arrived, the silver bear was drinking at the stream. The silver bear saw them and tried to attack. The horse said, don't be afraid, John, be brave. When the dragon's strength was finally crushed, the horse said, now let's go home. There is nothing to be afraid of anymore. So back they went and found the dragon lying weak on the floor. Now both get on my back because I will take you home. The king was old and frail when they arrived back. John approached him and said, Your Majesty, I have brought your daughter home. Here I am, father dear. The princess embraced the king and they both shed tears of joy. Even brave young John was seen to cry. John, you will be the king from now on. I give you my daughter, I give you my kingdom, I give you everything I possess. John married the pretty princess and they both lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there was a poor man. He was very poor and had a lot of children. It was near Christmas time and they had nothing to eat at home. So he had the idea to go out into the forest and collect nuts. Out he went and collected half a sack of nuts. He then took the nuts to the town where he planned to sell them. As he got close to the town, he met an old friend. Good morning, old friend. Good morning, old friend. Where are you going? I've got some nuts in this sack. I thought I might exchange them for some food for the children. Christmas is here and we have nothing to eat at home. I've got half a sack of poppy seeds and I also have a lot of children. I would like to exchange it as we don't have anything to eat at home either. Look, old friend, let's exchange the sacks without looking at what's inside. And they quickly exchanged sacks. Then one of the old friends arrived home. Well, children, I got half a sack of nuts in exchange for that half a sack of ashes. I shall pour them out for you to eat. He emptied the sack and it was full of oak apples. What 
to man. He cheated me. He will pay for this. The other old friend also arrived home. Wife, look, I brought half a sack of poppy seeds for that half a sack of oak apples. The children were so excited that they danced around the table. The wife brought out a giant bowl. Pour those poppy seeds out. Poured them out, but they were ashes. What a man! Why did he cheat me? So he set off to the town to meet his old friend. They both arrived and began to threaten each other with sticks. What a man! Why did you cheat me? They began to fight, but after a while, one of them began to laugh. Why did you cheat me? We could never cheat each other. Let's join forces and work together. A rich man gave them each a job and employed them for the last three days of the year. When the three days were up, they went to the man and asked for their wages. The rich man gave the order to bring each of them a plate full of gold. They were both very happy. They both got their wages and they both set off home. They were poor, but at the same time, they were cunning men. Look, old friend, we should go back to the pit where the gold was kept and we can take more of it during the night. So they took an empty sack and went back. How will we go down there? It looks very deep. So they fastened their belts together and one of them lowered the other man down into the pit. The one in the pit quickly gathered up as much gold as he could. Let me know when the sack is full. I'll pull it up first and then I'll pull you up. But the man in the pit had a better idea. If I send the gold up, he'll run away. I have to stay down here, but then they'll catch me. He put a lot of gold into the sack, but he did not fill it up. Then he climbed into the sack with the gold. Now you can pull. As they were nearing the forest, the man in the sack said, Put me down, old friend. I know I must be heavy. Oh, you are here too? Of course. I didn't want to stay down there. Let's have a rest. I'm very tired. Very well. Let's have a rest. The man was so tired that he sat down and fell fast asleep. So the other man picked the sack up and began to run away. When he awoke, the other man had gone. What can I do? He's taken it now. Very well. Then he cut a stick, tied a thread to it. And cracked it like a whip. Get on with you! And he made the noises of an ox cart. The other man heard the noises. Just in time. I'm so tired. I shall put my sack on that cart too. Then he saw his old friend. Old friend, we could never cheat each other. No, we couldn't. Let's have a rest, old friend. You must be tired too. I really am very tired. Then they had a rest. Now the one who had taken the sack fell fast asleep. The other man saw that his old friend was fast asleep and he took the sack and ran all the way home. There he told his wife, put this gold quickly in a box, take the hoe, come with me to the cemetery, bury me, and if my old friend comes to see me, tell him I am dead. So they went to the cemetery 
The woman carefully buried him under a thin layer of soil so that he would come to no harm. Then she returned home, where she held her head as if she was crying. When the other man awoke, he could not find his friend. He knew that he must have gone home, and so he hurried to his house. Good evening, dear lady. Good evening, kind sir, she said in her saddest voice. What's the matter? Why are you so sad? Where is my old friend? Your old friend? He died. I have just come home from the cemetery. Poor friend. I'm really sorry that I couldn't attend his funeral. Dear lady, lend me a hoe and I'll go and tidy up his grave. No need for that. It's tidy enough. It's an old friend's duty to tidy up his old friend's grave. So they went to the cemetery. The man saw the fresh grave and didn't dig with a hoe, but started to stamp about like a bull, clawing at the soil. Moo, 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 he said, and he hit the ground with the hoe. Stop that bull, said a voice from the grave. If you dig me up, my old friend will find me. Moo, 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 the other man said again, and he got hard to work with the hoe. Stop it, bull, my old friend will find me. I've already found you, old friend. Come out. Oh, well, we could never cheat each other. No, we never could. Then they went home, divided the gold between both families and had a very merry Christmas. <laughs>